And I think that you will find that increasingly, technologically speaking, they're all the same. They're all just indexes. They're not databases. What are some next generation library catalog application type of things that you folks know? No, no, a name of a product. Primo, okay, good, another choice. Aqua Browser, great, another one. Encore, great, that's only three. And DECA, right. And then we might have XC, we might have Viewfind. Let's see, what else do we got? There's Blacklight that comes out of University of Virginia. There's a number of these things. And then another one that you might pop into there would be Evergreen, okay? Now with the exception of Evergreen, all these other ones are very, very similar, okay? They all do the, same, the, the following thing. You have sets of data. They might be full text data or they might be metadata. They might be EAD files, other flavors of XML, mark records, uh, plain text, pictures, whatever. All sorts of stuff. And all of these things, except um, Evergreen, which is really an integrated library system, all of these things take this content they normalize it internally to the same, to their own, well, it's not always their own proprietary format, but they bring it in and they, they normalize it into a, as some sort of information object. And then they feed it to an indexer. And then once I have the index, then once I have the index, they provide services allowing you to search the index. But what's really interesting is that many of these things use the same tools underneath. You mentioned Primo, I mentioned XC. Uh, let's see, what else did we mention? Um, Primo, XC, Viewfind, okay? In those three cases, they bring in content, they normalize it into something, and they feed it to an indexer. And the indexer's name is Lucene. This is a free open source application. And Viewfind and Primo and XC are simply layers on top of Lucene. And then they provide an interface to the Lucene index. It's not rocket surgery, it's just, just, it's just an index. Now you take something like Indeca, that's an indexer. It's a proprietary indexer. You bring in content, you normalize it, you feed it to Indeca, it creates a back of the book type of index. And then they provide services against the other end. Then there was uh, Encore. I think it works very, 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 very similar. Okay, they all work very much the same. You bring in content, you index it, you provide services against the index. And then they provide did you mean and this faceted browse sorts of stuff which I kind of want, I think it's really cool, but I kind of wonder whether people are going to use it because their experience is Google and they're just going to, I think they're just going to put in words and they're going to look at the few, first few things that they find and I don't think that they're going to really kind of, <coughs> what's the word I want to use? I don't internalize this faceted sort of thing. I, I just, time will tell, usability tests will tell, but I just don't think it's going to work. In any event, they all work very, 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 very similarly, and they all use the same sort of open source technology, well, not all of them, uh, underneath. So given this environment, given this environment, I have a number of suggestions, and they're not too hard, and a lot of you have already uh, seen these sorts of things. One, I suggest that the library catalog isn't really a library catalog at all, in that it's not the stuff that you necessarily own but it's more like the stuff that is apropos to your particular audience. Try to bring into this catalog index the stuff that is apropos to your particular audience, and it might be a whole ranges of different types of content. Second, try to figure out ways to make this content available to the big three indexers, Google, Yahoo, and MSN. And the easiest way to do that is with these things called sitemaps. 
Sitemaps are really simple. All they are is a great big list of URLs. Send this great big long list of URLs that says, we have this document, that document, and the other document. And then it's going to come look at the document. It's going to try to figure out what that document's about, and it's going to add it to the index. In this particular case, what will happen is that people will go to one of those big three. We can't change their user behavior very much. Then they will identify and find your thing. Then they'll look at your thing within your information system, and then you're going to have a chance to allow them to find more like this one or provide services against the text. Figure out ways to um, make your stuff available to the big three. Can I advocate also integrating into your stuff as much as possible open access materials, and not just linking to Google Books, but going out, and especially in an academic environment, going out and collecting those scholarly articles that are available via open access and putting them into your content. And if they get put in your content and they're already academically uh, there, they're already scholarly in nature, they've already been vetted, if people start using these things and they're viable sorts of resources, other sorts of vendors are going to go, hey, wait a minute, you're not finding my stuff. I have good stuff. I'm from World, uh, uh, Web of Science. Here, here have my citations too. And we want that. We want to have, bring all this sort of content together and to put it into one great big pile so we don't have lots of little silos. Another idea is that when you have the queries, people are going to put in searches. Use your library eye to look at those queries. You can oftentimes, even though they're putting in a couple of words, you can oftentimes figure out kind of, sort of, what they're looking for. Try to take that information, combine it with you, what you've learned in the past, combine it with maybe what you know about the, your collection, combine it with what you think this person is, and try to do a referency interview type of thing to provide uh, an alternative interface, uh, put the user's uh, information need in context. And lastly, technoweenie-wise, we need to do less of library standards and do more of W3C computing standards. This means doing service-oriented architecture. This means doing RESTful web computing. This means creating simple URLs, like you saw with uh, WorldCat identities, not lots of question marks and ampersands and name value pairs all over the place, but one nice, simple, readable URLs. That sort of technique is going to be much more effective in the long run than making these hidden, hidden uh, deep web sorts of interfaces. Okay, so I pontificated a whole lot, uh, and I really, really, really do think that there's enormous opportunities in library land. Again, if we think that the what's are pretty much consistent, but the how's are going to change because of our environment, then all we have to do is do a little bit of attitude shifting, and we will be able to, uh, to be remain relevant in, the, in this world. A, a, a raise, rising tide floats all boats. If everyone's interested in information and data, then, boy, we're in the exactly correct position. I think that there's enormous opportunity, and um, I think that's all I really wanted to say today. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, we've got time for a couple of questions for Eric. Uh, 